Well, hey girls, my name is Makara Reed, and girl, we are about to be fashionably dating Ayana from Isayla, the fashion brand. So definitely check us out on this IG Live. I'm very excited. All right. Let's get this party started. I'm very excited that I started doing this. Making sure everything is going well. Make sure I put my phone on airplane mode. I mean, not airplane mode. All right, so we are back. Had to make sure my phone is on. Do not disturb. Yes, welcome to another episode of Fashionly Dating Makara. So we will be having the CEO and creative designer of Isayla. I'm very excited. I interviewed her a while back when she first released her collection in 2018 in LA. So now that I'm back into doing the media, I wanted to we're going to we're going to have her join the live. So we are just waiting for her. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Baby, I wanted to see if you guys. All right, so we are trying this again. And let me see if she is able to join us because it's saying, um, it's telling her she's unable to join. Us. I don't know why, but my Instagram, it be really acting up. Take two again. Are we here? Hey, girl. So my Instagram be like doing the most. I have I to. Like, what's going on? I'll be trying to tell people like behind the scenes, like Instagram be really flagging my account. I don't know what be going on. They all like me. I was like, am I here by myself? I was going to email you, but it's all good. Yeah. So yeah, I started over and then I was just let me do take two. Everybody is like take two. So I don't know. Instagram does not like me. I'll be trying to tell people. It's okay. We're here. Ciao. <laughs> hey y'all. Welcome to Fashionly Dating Makara. And in this live stream, we get to know the person, the designer. And in this case, we have Ayana from Isayla. Give it up for her. Woo! I'm screaming, Ayana, Aisha. Aisha, no! I can't. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm, it's okay, we go get sorry, it. I, I'm sorry. I'm like, how did you get Ayana, Aisha? Aisha. It's okay, it's okay. Aisha, sorry, sorry y'all. It's, it's been okay. a lot going on. It's okay. So yeah, y'all give it up for Aisha from Isaiah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice over here in the West Coast. Yes. Are you yes. where New York? I'm in Jersey, like right outside of New York. It's, is it cold over there or hot right now? No, girl, it's hot. It's been hot. Oh, it's been like yes. 100 degrees. It's still like Florida over here. Like muggy, nasty? Yes. Oh. <laughs> it feels like Florida. And I'm just like, girl, it's hot. It is not supposed to be this hot. Well, you guys don't get too much. Hot weather though, right? No, no, it'd be like it's like 90, 92, but like a hundred, no, like in a row, no. Well, enjoy it, girl. No, <laughs> I'm ready for the fall. <laughs> I am ready for the fall, and I am a summer person, but it, I love it's, like it's been hot like in a row, like repeatedly, girl. Okay, then you might not like LA. I don't know, it's always hot. Oh no, I lived in Las Vegas. And I used oh. to run over to like Los Angeles. So yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with like the different regions. Okay, they're just saying New Jersey weather how hot. It's just too hot. It's just like nasty. Yeah. Like so yeah, it, it's been hot. I'm from New Jersey. So like the weather is not like as like hot and humid like Miami. Oh. But this year it's just been like breaking records. Like we've never had this before. <laughs> I'm just like, girl, like what is going on? I'm not supposed to stay in Miami. 
Oh, you was in Miami? Okay, you everywhere. Yeah, I live everywhere. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm used to like the different regions. So yeah. Okay. Well, dang. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you from LA? No, I'm from the Bay Area. Okay, come on, little Bay. I was there. It was like during the pandemic. I went to like a flea market and this girl made me this amazing like scent and I was like, girl, just let me buy the whole thing because it was oh, smell so good. A flea market and she's the bay. Was it Berkeley? I think so. The Berkeley flea market? Yeah. Okay. It, have been, it was like a whole bunch of people and I was just like, she was like, oh, I just made this and I was just like, I didn't. I was like, oh, girl, well, I want the whole thing. Give me it all. How much you want? Oh, you still have it or is yes, Benga done yes because she didn't remember i emailed her because i took a car and i emailed her and i was just like what did you put in it and she was just like i don't even remember and i was just like man i'm really trying to like savor this little little this little <laughs> no i don't remember girl okay but All it right. smelled amazing it smells right. amazing i get compliments when i be like rubbing it i was like dang i gotta mix it with other fragrances now but she she can't make I you some more like something similar or she don't know any ingredients what she did child i don't think she remember because like i said i still had her car and i'm like i'm willing to pay like you'll remember and listen i'll be trying to support and people just don't be having logistics behind listen all right so, oh, yeah. yeah that was the last time i was over there I drove around, but yeah, that was the last time I was over there. But mm -hmm. and I went to the uh, fruit station. I had to go because of the movie. Yes, yeah, yep, 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 yep. All right, so let's get to getting to know you. All right. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna try. <laughs> so everyone has like their own individual story on how they get how they got into fashion so how did you get into fashion like what's your fashion story i don't honestly i don't know but i just grew up with like my mother and my sisters are very into fashion mm -hmm. my mom was into her designer bags had all the things mm -hmm. and i was just like okay and i like how she put things together and she was very conservative like right. okay. So nothing was really revealing and I kind of took that approach and I was like, I like that, but it was always like sophisticated. And like my older sister would always like buy things off of eBay, vintage, and when she put it together, mm -hmm. I liked it. So I just feel like fashion just came really easy to me. It was very effortless. And so something I was like, I always heard it was like, do something that you would do for free. Right. And I think fashion is one. So I would do this for free. Like I like it. I enjoy it. It comes effortlessly to me. And I think I'm really good at it. So I think at times, like in high school and going to college, I didn't know if I wanted to be a stylist or like have my own brand. So I was kind of mm -hmm. going between the two. But that's really like my store is fashion. Like it's really just like I saw something, I liked it. I did modeling too, just kind of see if I like doing that. So, but yeah, girl, that's really my fashion store. I feel like my brand is really like around like sisterhood mm -hmm. like my upbringing a lot so like women around me and so I really like look to that and then I found a way to do it my way mm -hmm. yeah everyone has like such a different story so I just always like to hear like how did you how did you get into fashion it don't matter like what aspects some people it's a you know it's a lot of people who come from like healthcare mm -hmm. background and then they just make a pivot some people come from styling or photography or whatever the case may be so it's just always interesting like how did you get into fashion yeah it was just kind of like a I honestly didn't know about college mm -hmm. I didn't want to go I told my mom I was like I'm not really that's not for me right she's like you gotta you gotta do something Aisha and I was like okay well I will go to fit em. that's where I went to school mm -hmm. and I was like okay fashion here we go and I was like okay because I really felt like you could do fashion without school but I will yeah. say I am happy that I went there because like a lot of my resources that I got is from my institution like my pattern makers and whatnot so I don't know it just felt right though too like even in high school I would always get best dressed so I knew fashion was a lane and it was just easy but it was hard growing up because my mom and dad didn't really understand fashion they were like wow. what career you're gonna get out of this how are you gonna make a living like, they're kind of like tell us like what are you doing right and I was just like just sit back and watch me work and they're like okay mm -hmm. so I mean it all worked out but mm -hmm. that's just kind of like I feel like in a way like 
in my journey, I'm on, I'm not saying I'm in this alone, but like I really didn't have anyone to look up or be like, okay, am I doing this correctly? It was kind of like, this is what I want to do. Right. And I'm going full fledged because like all my other siblings, like one is into nursing, one's a lawyer, one plays um, baseball. So we're all doing different things. I mm-hmm. feel like mine is kind of just like out there different, but the artistic one, the creative. Right. So they were kind of like, what is that? They don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, can you make any money, be living or anything? They're not, you know, you know, black parents are big on that. Of so, course. So, you know, it's like, they're just like, what are we doing? So, yeah, that's kind of how I really got into it. Just really just by seeing my siblings and my mother and how they dress. I just liked how they carried themselves. And I was like, mm, I like that. And I want women to dress like that. Because I don't feel like you have to be always revealing. And so right. I just kind of took that into it and made it into a brand. <laughs> right. That's good. You know, a lot, you know, I'm a woman of color as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the creative, it's like, mm, can you make any money from it? Do you have insurance? Do you have a pension? Like, what about your retirement plan? <laughs> and nowadays, it's like, you can do this on your own. Like you can set up your own type of retirement plan yeah. when you, if you go if you're like um reading up on like fidelity investment, that's what I do. Or you could just set up everything your own and they're just kind of just stuck in their ways from the old ways. Right. And now like this is going we're going into like a freelancer type of or independent worker type of um economy. So there is so many ways for us to kind of just do what we love to make it big enough to make it like our living and then right. you know make sure that we're good for future or if we come through like pitfalls and stuff like that mm-hmm. so that's good that you just follow through even though you're sib- how many siblings do you have i have three so i'm the baby i'm the youngest of four yes yeah. come on baby <laughs> sit in. I'm the baby too. <laughs> oh okay yes yeah all four yes. yes so we get away with murder <laughs> And we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I loved it. So when you got into like the fat, the business of fashion, what were like your expectations? Girl, I thought I was going to make a million dollars the next day after I launched. I don't know. Everybody's thinking you're going to just have this crazy selling and people are going to do bloody. Right. No, right. I kind of was like, no one wants to buy from me. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just kind of was like a gut punch. I think my expectations were way too high. Mm-hmm. Um, if I could do it all, all over again, I wish I would have had like a better marketing plan or like had my Instagram socials together, like had like a coming soon, like get people, community involved. Right. And right. I didn't have that. I literally just had a fashion show and then I was like, okay, boom, I launched. And it was like, girl, where are your customers though? Mm-hmm. So I don't know i just really thought i was gonna have this thing booming and Mm -hmm. no yeah (laughs) yeah i ran across your collection you had that red um two-piece it was it was like um it's like plaid red white and black yes your runway my suit yeah yeah the suit Mm -hmm. i saw that i saw that and i was like oh what is this and it was like in los angeles uh fashion week and i'm just like oh let me interview her and it was just like, you had just, this was like your first collection. Yeah. I was like, oh, this, okay, this is more my speed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what has like life been like, like out uh, after the collection launch? A lot. So I want to say that was what, 2019 mm-hmm. and then 2020. It was, was it 18? It was either 18 or 19. 2020, it was... Um, um, the pandemic right. and that actually kind of changed my life a little bit oh. in a good oh. way I was surprised I just said oh oh okay so mm-hmm. I got into you know my first boutique it was called Elise Walker in Pacific Palisades mm-hmm. and then um, I joined this um, what is it called this like acceleration program called like Raise Fashion and so I got a mentor there then I was able to get my brand in Saks Fifth Avenue good Congrats. Yeah, thank you. So so that's kind of what happened after, you know, the fashion shows. And I was like, okay, cool. And 
now like I'm really trying to focus solely on like building my community like Mm -hmm. as you're seeing like like, stores are closing or they're merging so it's almost like you really have to make sure your back end is good to go like you have your customers you know so that's what I'm basically doing right now just Mm -hmm. really trying to build a community do more local pop-ups out here in Los Angeles and really just trying to grow my following girl the Azela woman like I know they're out there I'm like you know it's so many brands out there but like I'm like I have to just keep showing 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 Mm -hmm. things and running ads so that's what's been going on (laughs) I really like the pop-up scene I don't sell clothes but I do styling and doing conventions because my target is like business women who need to use their image as like a tool and then they need to also just transition to like happy hour you know boardroom Mm -hmm. to happy hour boardroom to date night and stuff like that so I've been doing like conventions and like little workshops I find that the in-person experience has been like so mind-blowingly like upscale especially since we've been locked in for like three years yeah. The in person is like really, really amazing, and that's, and also that's just how us females like that's how we shop. Like we need to try it on, we need to see how it looks, we need to see it like next to an accessory. So I just feel like the pop ups, the yeah, the pop up scene is like yeah, amazing. It's, it's not like I just did one two weeks ago, and yeah, I did pretty well, and I was like, wow, okay, I was like, this is what I need to be doing more. People mm-hmm. want to see the clothing in person and try it on, interact, get a feel of you. Like this whole online thing, I don't know. It's so hard. I don't. I don't get it. I'm just yeah. like, uh, okay. <laughs> so you know, I'm still learning, but I'm mm-hmm. also noticing that the pop ups is what I need to be doing more of. Yeah, digital media. I don't know. I want to say I don't know, but like you see how we just had this trouble with Instagram. <laughs> Instagram be on this little whatever, but you know, my Pinterest is like booming. Oh, yeah. My- my Pinterest is like booming. Okay. Um. So like, there's like certain platforms, but in person, it's like Chef's Kiss. Cause I'm gonna be going to Austin in October, um, PA in um November, and yeah, it's it's just it's I don't know. Digital media, it's it's it plays like this little mind games, but in person, it's like a whole different experience. So mm-hmm. if if I can give you a suggestion, because I reworked my um, business plan, I got my um, business mentor, and we she seen this trajectory, and she was just like, yeah, like, in person is it for you. Okay. Also, you stylist, um, why haven't you pulled from me, ma'am? Girl, we need to get it together. Because <laughs> you said businesswoman? That, that, oh, that's my target. I like, just did it. I just oh. did it after the pandemic. Before I was doing like editorials, but the pandemic, I mean, who was keeping my business alive? Businesswoman. And my my mentor was just like, you need to switch your primary. So no, I'm like in full execution mode with the businesswoman now. So, okay. you know, the past yeah. six months has been like, yeah, businesswoman now. But before I was doing like editorials, lookbooks, model development, and, you know, fashion in New York was completely shut down. Mm-hmm. During the whole New York, I mean, um, during the pandemic. Yeah, for sure. No, the businesswomen are the ones that have the money. They're working. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah they were yeah. still doing Zoom calls, yeah. hearings, real estate tours. I was like, okay. Yeah. It was like, you need to switch your target. Business and I was like, I think still going. Okay. For them. So, so, yeah, I'm glad you made that change. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was like, oh, let me, let me do the switch. Let me switch my business plane around. So yeah, it's in full throttle. So what has life been like outside of your brands? What kind of girl are you? Oh my goodness. I'm really an introvert girl. Are you really? Yeah. Oh. I know. How, how much of an introvert? Cause I'm an introvert, but when it's like business time, I can be an extrovert and people be like, you're an introvert? And I'll be like, girl, business needs to pay my bills. Yes. Yeah, so I know how to turn it on and turn it off. Uh-huh. You kind of have to be an invisible woman. You're a salesperson. You got to be right. fun. But, I mean, I sit behind the closed doors. I'm introvert. I like to be at home with my two dogs and, you know, just watch TV and just chill. Like, I just be in my head a lot. Um, I don't know. I just feel like 
like I'm in a place right now where I'm like things are going well. I'm con- not saying I'm content, but like I'm learning to be happy in the process. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I'm just learning just to really just what's the word like be still mm-hmm. and enjoy the things, the present. So, girl, I just be at home. Yeah. I I. I yeah. I just really be oh like my. at home. Like, I don't know. I'm just like, yeah, I don't really like to go out. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a kind of just like, this is going to sound so bad, but it's almost like, what are you celebrating? You're not mm-hmm. where you want to be. Um, I don't know. I'm just very like grind, 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 but also learning, you know, to have fun, but then stay within myself. I have my close friends I hang out with. I love brunches. You know, I love the beach, but honestly, day to day, I'm just, a girl that likes to be by herself. Oh, all right. Oh, I know. So if, I say, so if I say, like, hey, girl, I'm in town. Let's do some drinks. What would you say? I don't drink. I can say we can do coffee. Yeah. That, we can do tea. I mean, yeah, I don't mean alcohol. I, I can mean, like, drink, like, coffee, me tea. Or oh, yeah. I'll have, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. So I, I, I got to put that. I'm like, I don't do drinking. But, yeah, I mean, we I order coffee or tea. But, yeah, we can do that. Okay, so, so you're not like, I like, want to, oh, okay, I'll get back to you. No, I mean, they're going to tell you yes or no. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Because it'd be some to be like, oh, okay, I'll get back to you. And don't be never getting no. back to you. No, I'm not like, I'm not fake. I'll be like, yes, or I'll be like, not at this time. Okay. But, yeah. Mm-mm. I'm really, like, straightforward, direct, but I be in my own little lane. So I feel like people know, like, when you come to Aisha, like, it's not saying like what do you want, but it's almost like I think I think just as like I've grown my brand, mm-hmm. I just have to be kind of careful. I feel like people just want to just talk small talk, and yeah, I learned the art of small talk. I I be reading books, and small talk is like one of them things I had to like read. And then yeah, in the book um influential how to how to influence people something like that yeah I had to like read all the little books because I used to be like in the corner <laughs> chilling but you I can't always be like that no we can't so like I'm learning like okay small talk you know you have to I don't like it but I feel like to get to know someone if you want to get to know someone you know you gotta have a conversation but I'm also learning like people like exchanging energies is really like significant so i'm always making sure like who am i speaking with what are we interchanging what right. are we getting from one each other what's the banter like what are we doing so i just i'm always curious and worried like is someone trying to just pick my brain mm-hmm. but it's like what am i picking out you know i just wanted to be it makes it make sense for both parties yeah so i'm just always yeah, curious just about understand. who's around me so that's why i feel like i'm just always to myself and mm-hmm. i'm big on like i choose who i want to be around but when it comes to business I put my business hat on and I have to, you know, get, set, get a deal. I, it's, you know, I'm just like, okay, let's do it. Right. I'm a different person. God. <laughs> I think you'll grow into like your own as you like mature and like your business thing. Cause I definitely was like the same way. Yeah. I find it. Uh, yeah. I find it just a little helpful when it's like, when I merge like my personal personality with my business. So people could kind of just put their head down and like, you see how we just having a conversation and we just, Mm -hmm. we never had a conversation before this. No. So I like, see So I like dealing with customers like this. I don't want you to be like, here, here, this is what I do. This is da, 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 da. I don't like the boom, 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 boom. I want you to at least feel comfortable, especially with me doing styling. And it's because I'm in your personal space. I need you to be comfortable. So I just feel like for me, I found that, um, yeah, just having some of my personal persona in my professional was helpful, but also just knowing what, when you're crossing my boundaries. Like, if you keep harassing me and, all right, I'm not interested and committed. Like, please check back in six months. Like, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Boundaries are important. Oh yes, I got to have those. The layers of being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's my next question? Oh, what are your core values as a designer? Oh, my core values as designing. Mm-hmm. I would say 
I like everything to be ethical. So like, I like things, I mean, my brand is made locally in LA. Okay. So that's ethical to me. Like I like being able to see my sewers, interact with them, build relationships, touch the fabric, be there. I'm, you need me, I'm coming. So it's really like yeah. the relationship. And I take that on with my business, with my um, customers as well. Mm -hmm. Like, again, like you said, like, I don't like the boom, boom, boom. I like the, hey, I want to get to know you. What can I do better? Um, you know, like, how, how can the customer service be better? So that's another thing I'm big on with my business. I use, like, customer service. Like, I've been told of a lot of customers, like, you have, a, you have great customer service. Like, if something was wrong on my end, I will fix it. I will accommodate you in any way. So those are two big values to me. And then one thing I really like, I put in everything I do, like, I – I want to, me as the owner, to empower you mm -hmm. by me and even by the clothing. Mm -hmm. So I want you to feel like you're in power and also, like, by me speaking life into you. You know, I want you to believe, like, I am the woman I say I am and the mm -hmm. clothes stand for that as well. Okay. I feel like your community is going to be, like, amazing because you just listed, like, everything what people look for in, like, a community when it comes to, like, when you, I know you mentioned earlier that you said you wanted stability. That's, that's, like, everything that people, like, look for. I hope so. I'm, like, looking for it. It's just so hard. Like, I'm just, like, where are you ladies? I feel like I've created, like, a tribe in New York, but, like, I really want to find it locally in Los Angeles, and it's just really, really hard, and, like, being stocked at Saks, it did help me, you know, mm -hmm. for the New York ladies. I feel like my aesthetic is really more New York. I would say, like, when I first came out, a lot of people were like, are you from New York? I'm like, no, I'm based in L.A. They're like, oh, wow, this is different. Like, we don't see clothing like this in L.A. And I was like, uh-oh. So when someone told me that, I, I knew what they meant. Like, L.A., the culture here, the dressing, it is so Relax. different. Yes. So I was just like, dang, I can't do my suit and boot it. No one's wearing that in LA. I'm like, okay, but I know women are somewhere else. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm praying. I'm hopeful that I'm going to find this community. I know it's going to take time and I'm, I'm going to wait, you know, slow and steady. So I'm like, you know what? Like God has a plan and I'm just kind of, mm -hmm. I'm staying still. So it's coming. <laughs> All right, definitely make sure you stay on top of your analytics and see where your audience is coming from. It's coming from New York, and they say Los Angeles, but I'm like, New York, LA, where, where y'all at? I don't see. <laughs> right. It's a lot of business handling done in New York and a lot of conventions. I'm surprised Las Vegas is not like a little pocket mm. little audience because that's, that's the number one convention area on on the west coast or like in, within america but yeah new york it's a lot of business you got a lot of podcasters you got production you have meetings boardrooms you have wall street like, another one it says like for me is houston, houston chicago and atlanta so i said those make sense as well it's a lot of this east coast midwest so i was like okay but i feel like los angeles comes because i'm from los angeles and a lot of my followers, like friends, family, they follow me, but I feel like customers really, it's not LA. Right. So we're learning. <laughs> yeah. So where did the name of your business come from? Honestly, it's going to sound so cheesy. <laughs> I was looking for something that wasn't my name, but I want to keep it within an eye. Uh, okay. And and so I was thinking, I was just like, what, is I, what does Isaiah mean to you? And I was like, I got it. And I said, Isaiah means the woman who I'm going to become. Ooh. And I feel like every woman wants to become someone they see themselves. It's, we're always evolving. So I said, oh, this is a good connection. So I was like, I found Isaiah. I was messing up names. Zayla with B, okay. I, and I was like, I want an I. And so Isaiah just came. I looked it up and I was like, I like this. So I created my own meaning to it. Oh, so I think okay. it fits perfectly. Yeah. So that's I like that. The woman you want to become. I like that. Yeah, I feel like, you know, as women, we're always, you know, we want better. We're not the same woman as we were before, you know, even a month, a year. We're always evolving and changing. So I feel like right. I have not yet become the woman I want to become. But I keep looking at my... You know, my inspiration, Isaiah, I'm like, she's there. I know who who I want to become. So, mm -hmm. I feel like, that was a good, you know, catch with that. 
I like that. That's really clever. Thanks. Like that. <laughs> yes. So when so after you decided your name, were there any type of like specific standards you wanted for your apparel brands? Explain standards so, as in. So you mentioned that you picked the name because it's the woman that you want to mm -hmm. become. So were there like type of standards like, okay, I want this woman to be the epitome of Los Angeles. She is top tier. She is making, you know, X amount of money. She has three amazing best friends who, you know, hold her to a certain degree of her word. Like yeah. those. She had my customer things. profile. Yes, I have that. I, I have that. I mean, I wanted her to have, you know, six, seven figures. I want to have mm -hmm. her own business. I want her to be a mother, a wife. I want her to be sophisticated. I wanted her to be independent. I mean, all things, things that I want to become, basically. I feel like I'm okay. kind of looking into the woman as me. Like, who does Aisha want to become? And I'm like, I know there's other women out there that want to become that. I think mm -hmm. I also wanted to create something that, you know, as a woman, it's hard to be, oh, here we go, feminine plus masculine. Oh, yeah, the blends. So I was just wow. like, that's kind of who I see myself become. I know there's a lot of women that are fighting that, trying to figure mm -hmm. out this balance game with that. So I was just like, I should, you can have a business, you can be a mother, you can be a wife, you can do this, do this, do all things. So I feel like really like that Zayla woman is like the modern day woman. She's sophisticated and she radiates like who she is. Like mm -hmm. she is really comfortable in her own skin skin yeah. and wh yeah. whoever that whoever that might be so that's really what I wanted and I feel like that customer is going to come like if you are unique and you own up to who you are like that's who I'm targeted to um even like you know with the job jobs like I feel like the bosses really are the customer too like I wanted a boss woman you know have your own business that's real estate or tech or mm -hmm. whatever you're doing like you just really enjoy being in power that's that's what i see okay so what would you say the similarities are with your first collection when you first launched and then the latest collection oh my goodness that's a great question hmm. and the similarities with all the collections i make first and last everything is also going to be versatile and oh it's going to be comfortable so that's what that's i wanted nice. It's just, it's light. It's just, you know, it's easy to put on. I feel like as a woman that is very, you know, effortless. I feel like you see something, you know what to do with it. It's not too much. Like everything, I like two sets, like sets, a shirt yes. and that goes together. That's my vibe. So every collection is going to have that. I would say the first collection I made, <laughs> it's basically me. It's who I want the world to see me as. <laughs> Like it's suited, strong, but this last one is more, it was into my like childhood. It was me being fun, you know, the prints, the colors. But again, the two similarities they have, they're just versatile. And that's what all my collections are gonna have. So if you're like, mm -hmm. what makes you set apart? It's just like, you know, it's versatility. Like you can pair it up any way you want to with a pair mm -hmm. of jeans together, whatever. It's effortless. Like that's the word I say with my designs. It's mm -hmm. effortless. Like it's. You know, it's no thought process to it. Yes. See, this is why you gravitate to the East Coast. We <laughs> need to, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know. because Okay, I'm let me know like, something. <laughs> yes, we are hustling and bustling. Time is very limited. A lot of New Yorkers, specifically, I'm in New Jersey. I'm in the suburbs. So, I mean, I'm like semi but New Yorkers run on a tight schedule. So we got to catch a train, we got to catch an Uber, we got to go to the meeting in another 45 minutes. And when you say these words, we need to be able to put on something, change, you said set. A lot of my clients, I have taught them to take the top off and put on another shirt and keep the bottom mm -hmm. on so it looks like a new outfit. Right. And then accessorize um, heavily. So when you say those words, those words attract people who are moving and shaking. And that's what a lot of New Yorkers or East Coast people do because some New Yorkers may travel to D.C., take the Amtrak train, go to D.C., and then come back up. And those things really, like, attract people who are, like, moving and grooving. 
multiple times throughout the day. And that's what I like. I'm like, I feel like Isaiah, my brand, it's on the go. It's just like, you don't got to think about it. You just, mm -hmm. I got that easy. Like two set, a jumpsuit, I'm out of right. here. And you still okay. look fly. It's just like, what's that? Oh, my jumpsuit, mm -hmm. you know, like, so that's, you know, what I'm really trying to portray, like, to the world with my brand. Like, it's just easy. It's mm -hmm. just, you don't got to think about it. Right. Just put it on. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So what would you say is the difference between your first and your latest collection? It was more suited. It was more construction okay. in the first okay. collection. It was more like strictly New York. Like, yeah. and, and this latest one I did, it's very fun. It's LA. It's so colors. It, just, yeah. just, it was bold colors punch. And that's why I was just trying to figure out like, am I trying to make a cousin? Am I trying to make my collection more towards west coast mm -hmm. or east coast so i was trying to figure it out mm -hmm. i would say this latest collection a lot of my east coast customers didn't like it it was maybe too oh. much color it was fun it was you know like this i created this new jumpsuit mm -hmm. it's it's um it's pinstriped yeah you know it's more relaxed most Los Angeles, so mm -hmm. they bought a lot of it in in the East Coast. It wasn't really a hit. I was like, okay, I think East Coast likes a lot of, you know, loud boom, like just yes. spectacular and like which I, yes, which I, I do have. You know, it's like you know my jumpsuit and air it's an iridescent my pico taffeta. Like mm -hmm. they love that like in your face. And I think LA is more like I can't wear that here. I want something more just chill, relaxed vibe. Like mm -hmm. I'm going to a picnic, so. Those are similarities I would say that I had. It was just really trying to figure out like what collection is geared towards what. And I was trying something different. And I was like, maybe this will, you know, maybe poach some LA, you know, West Coast, you know, customers, mm -hmm. which it did. But I'm trying to learn how to basically put both together because I both feel like mm -hmm. I have two mm -hmm. styles. I have like a business meets tra travel, and that's what I wanted. So I feel like everything I make, it's flowy, versatile, but I also want to add some suiting. But mm -hmm. also want to add sets that's just relaxed. You can travel and go to business. Right. Because, you know, yeah. So I'm trying to figure out how I can do that. Okay. Which one was like your favorites personally? I, I did a resort collection. Okay. I, I have some pieces here. We going to get to um, it. Hold I'm going to say, you want me to show you? Want me to show you? Because right here is right here. We're going to get to it the next one with that we're going to get into okay. it. it's my resort collection that was okay. my favorite because it was a mixture of business meets travel it was whimsical it was just like ah, oh, it was beautiful yeah okay okay so you're probably like more the playful color type of girl but you need the silhouettes to be like simple yeah, yeah simple but statements like a punch like what's yeah. that and this is like okay but yes i'm very as simple i feel like less is more always i love mm -hmm. construction i love suiting i just love really like a good staple piece i feel like every woman should have that in her closet that's a jacket a pair of pants a blazer like you need that and so mm -hmm. i really always want to incorporate like classic silhouettes in every collection that i have you can bring out in 10 years okay all right, well, let's get into the physical attraction. <laughs> Come on with it, girl. Shoot, you jumping ahead in the question. Shoot. I'm sorry. I'm like, I brought it here. <laughs> so let's get into a fashion item. Okay. Let's tell us about it. Take it over, girl. All right. So this is my oh. embroidery blazer, okay? Oh. My, she's my favorite. So I mean, you can wear her to work. You can wear her to brunch, mm -hmm. you know, dinner. I mean, honestly, wherever, that's the point. First right. of all, like you wear whatever you want to do with it. And then I also love, so these are kind of like, like, I have a sporty side. And I was trying to figure this out. You know how like the tearaways, the sports tearaways. Right. So I did this in a ponte. The girls loved it. And I had like a, a, a set. I had a shirt to go with it, hot, but they like the pants more. The yeah. pants are very nice and fitted. Like stretch and so i like to wear sometimes these two together it's just fun okay you do it together that's what i did but these are my two favorite pieces from that resort collection i was telling you about so it's just easy like i like easy but it's always like a you look cute you look nice where's that from every time i wear my pieces or anyone does 
Mm -hmm. They're just like, what's that? That looks really good. Where's it from? I'm like, you like this? Okay. Yeah. So, right. yeah. Just, those are my two things. Oh, I like. wait, we got the Olympics coming up. So you better put, you better put it in your copy with the, with the pants. I know, I know, I know. Right? You're right. Okay, you give me some ideas. Come on, girl. <laughs> I'm out here in these streets. <laughs> yes. Um, how often do you drop? Because it, it just um, dawned on me when you was just like, you're trying to find like a medium between the two styles. I sometimes, so the past, what, five years I would mm -hmm. say I'm doing this, I would drop two collections a year. Okay. So I would do a summer spring collection and I would do a resort. So this year, I haven't dropped anything, honestly, mm -hmm. and I'm kind of happy. I'm trying to figure out what exactly do I want to pivot somewhere else or do I want to, you know, keep doing what I'm doing, but like make it more broader to like everyone mm -hmm. can kind of see like mm -hmm. colors, like what's working. It was funny. I have a conversation today uh, with a, a woman that wants to, you know, do some wholesale with me, but she was like, what are you working on? I'm like a new collection. She does something new. I'm like, honestly, I'm trying to pivot, but I'm also trying to stay what I'm doing because I feel like it's working. So why change it? Right. But for me, it's like, I want to go back to what I was doing when you first saw my collection, like the suiting. That's where my heart is. That's where I see the woman. But it's like, this is not a hobby. We're here to make money. And it's not about what I like. It's not. It's not the customer. So the customer liking this crinkle taffeta this airy flow um you know whimsical flowy like keep doing it why are you trying to pivot and change like mm -hmm. we're trying to sell you know so i'm still trying to figure out still like are, are we doing suiting or being the two are we just going to keep going with this crinkle taffeta material and just kind of hitting it here here which people love you know i'm always big mm -hmm. about like changing something up but I mean, if it's, if it, what they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Right. right. But you also so, got to incorporate what you love. Yeah, you do. But then again, girl, it's not about me anymore. Like, it's about the woman, the Isaiah woman. You know, we're, it goes back to we're evolving. So it's not about, it's not about me. So I'm just kind of like, I'm here to basically create something for women that feel comfortable and they love it. So if I'm making something they don't love, it's not, it's, it's not about them so you know it's it doesn't make any sense like why are we doing this that's the case i would make the clothes for myself and right. not sell it right. <laughs> but to answer your question twice a year but this year i haven't dropped anything i'm supposed mm -hmm. to drop a fall collection i'm in the works of that but i'm you know kind of like trying to get the kinks out trying to figure out are we doing suiting or are we sticking to what we know what what sells have you conducted like a market research with your most repeated customers to see like what they love about your brands i did something like that what do you call it like a focal group i did like yeah. a survey maybe a year ago and it was more based upon like why haven't you bought or like what's stopping you like what do you like about the brand mm -hmm. i mean a lot of the ladies were just like your brand you know it seems like it's for women that have to always be going somewhere and i was just like that's not the case so you can really wear it every day mm -hmm. so I, I also will drop certain silhouette sketches and be like hey what sketch would you like mm -hmm. they all seem to not go to blazers and suiting yeah that's, that's not la so i was just like okay they're not liking that they like you more of what i'm doing you know simple flowy mm -hmm easy i was like okay then i can't do this suiting thing it's not gonna work right but, but i'm not losing hope like this blazer that i love did it do well it didn't like it was something different i mean i sold it to stack mm -hmm. that did its thing but on my end no no so i was right. just like okay i'm just really seeing what i like is not selling so i'm like okay we can't be sad about it. We have to pivot and move. Right. Yeah. Marketing is a tricky thing. And tapping into the minds of your customers. It's the ongoing thing. And you really do. 
like this. What's the analytics? Yeah. You know, it's not always what you want, and you really just have to have tough skin and yeah. just and just move on. So, I mean, the my best seller that I absolutely did not like, I did not want to drop on my in the fashion show that you first mm-hmm. saw. Guess mm-hmm. what? It's like the best seller. It's keeping the lights on. It just it's <laughs> you know like it's. It's the ones that you think, you know, it's the ones that you hate. Like the silhouettes are, the, are like your best sellers that take off. So, right. you know, I'm just, I'm just listening to that. Girl, it's a <laughs> Don't you, I, I had to do it during the pandemic and I had time because the pandemic was so long. But yeah, you are actually like selling products. So like the process is like longer for you. Yeah. I'm just a service provider. Yeah, I need to come over here and get these clothes. <laughs> y'all, <laughs> y'all women is different. I like my business women. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's get into who is trending. Let me see who's trending right now. We're going to do our nice little fun little question. Who is trending? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Um, we're going to do Kamala Harris. Oh, so if you if you had to dress Kamala Harris based on her love language, I'm gonna say physical touch. Okay, how would you dress her? In Isaiah or just in in anything? In in your brand, girl. New or new or past. I would put her in a suit, but which one, girl? That's the thing, in a suit, but not your regular standard. Like I would literally put something different. Like here we go. I would pull something like this that and give her a set. Very different for her. I do. I think she needs something different. Yeah. Um, you know, I think she has a lot of energy. She's bubbly. She's lively. She has a great mm-hmm. smile. So I think something that will. Take out of a comfort zone, I think, would be something like, wow, that looks great. That's new. So right. I'll put her in my embroidery jacket and put a matching, you know, pantsuit, pin, pinstripe pants. Yeah, it should be cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Real cute. <laughs> More than cute. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. So it will be trending for sure. Oh, for sure like look at she has stepped out of her comfort zone right she's wearing she's wearing color like multiple right. colors hello so that's what i love to see yeah she, she kind of does need to step out a little bit mm-hmm. all right. <laughs> all right. so what is the future for you as a designer like what, Goodness, what's your designer goal honestly like, like designer goals i would love to have a flagship store mm-hmm. in new york i love new york girl Please so just like a, yeah okay. i don't know I, I really want to move to new york in two years like that's the plan i feel like la i've ran its course i'm mm-hmm. looking for something different but really you want to you know create a team like a small intimate team of like 10 and be by coastal so la and also in new york have a flagship store and also, I want to start a nonprofit. I want to call it the Isaiah Love Foundation. So I really want to give back. You know, it's really hard as like a black woman designer. You know, it's really expensive. So I would like to give back, help, you know, young women. I don't care what age. I mean, we all have dreams and goals and desires. And if I can help right. you, you know, like I feel like that's something that would help me because, I mean, I'm, I'm such a helpful person i always want to give back and help because i mean those that have helped me or those that haven't helped me like i know what it's like that i'm like i'm over here like it might seem like i'm doing so well but really like i'm struggling it's just hard so like you know so that's really the future and then also just like financial freedom like i think to share that to have that and and also, you know, let women know like financial freedom, it's there, it's abundant, you know, with nothing is impossible. So right. I think, you know, that's something that I want to get into. Who knows, maybe even a cute little podcast or something. Because like, you know, I'm really big on like empowering women. So it's just like my clothing's about that. I'm about that. Like I always want to breathe life into people. So I think overall, like even like getting to like philanthropy. So like 
I feel like I'm more than a designer. So that's one thing I want people to know. Yeah. Like, I'm a businesswoman. Like, I want to do other things. But, you know, like, I feel like it goes back to a Zayla woman. Like, we do all multifaceted things. Mm-hmm. Like, she's not just one dimension person, yeah. woman. So, yeah, girl, that's the future. <laughs> I love it. Yes. So the brand Azela has fashionably dated Makara. Woo! <laughs> So yes, cute. I hope you guys definitely go check out her brands. It's tagged in a post and on my Instagram. Yes. Instagram is flag my account again. Um, <laughs> show. Talk about poly community guidelines. Anyway, would you like to share any news to anyone? Um, let's see. If you are new, we just restocked one of our best sellers our Thai front play suit and we also mm-hmm. have another jumpsuit coming out so come over come check us out mm-hmm. sign up to our newsletter and if you do you get 20% off your first purchase okay everybody likes you know a little free money a little money. discount, a little a little discount. okay okay so come shop with us and I mean welcome to be an Isaiah woman if you do okay you'll love it over here I promise you <laughs> Yes. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed Fashionly Dating Makara with Aisha. I said it right now. Yes. 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 I don't know what I was thinking before. If you guys want to catch the chow, (laughs) if you guys want to catch the playback, it will be on my YouTube because YouTube, me and YouTube is friends. Okay. Okay. And then what else? Is there anything else? That's pretty much it. Stay tuned for next week. I will be talking to another fashion designer. I hope you guys checked out the previous designer from last week. We gonna keep this show rolling, and hopefully Instagram can we can still be uh, associates. Okay. Instagram, yeah, they are my last course for me too. But hey, I mean, it's okay. It, it, this, listen, I wanted to kickstart this little idea. You know, my writer, she found me blogging. And that's how she was like, oh. why don't you pick this up but do a live stream? And I'm just like, let me get some project out the way like first. So, yeah, I picked it up. Because, you know, I was I met you through blogging. Right. You wasn't Are you still doing, doing that? No, I stopped. I pursued why? my style. I wanted to pursue my style of business. You should still, girl. still do it. Blogging is a lot. So, no, I picked it up doing, um, I'm doing live streams. Live streams. I'm picking up the live streams. But everybody loves a good write-up blog. Like, Girl, people, okay. people do not be reading. People do not be reading. Do not be fooled. Girl, I wrote a book. I mean, and people be like, like they you will. have an audio book? I mean, they will, but it's like, I don't know. I guess, like, people read, like, Vogue or Essence. I don't know. Right. But we're not saying that you might could be the next essence. So, I mean, come on. Girl, well, I picked it up with this live, okay? <laughs> we, I was like, let me, let me pull it together. Let me do the live. Maybe we'll get back to blogging. But I was like, let me pick it up with at least live streaming and actually seeing people. So, yeah, no, one of my writers was like, you, you used to do this? And I was like, yeah, I used to do it. And I stopped. But, um, What yeah. about a podcast? The post-production is super annoying with podcasts, girl. Tell me more about that. I, I really want to get into that, but is that, like, hard to keep up with or it something? It is. Because once you record the audio, you need to, like, audit the tracks, like, to make the sound, like, better, like, sound, you know, obtainable. Because if you got, like, noise in the background, you got to kind of edit that out. I don't, girl, I don't got the skills for that, and I don't want to invest in that. That's, like, that's not my area. I want to do the visual, okay? Like this live stream right here. I'm downloading, put it on my little backdrop, and then call it a day. Uh, Okay. You know, quick and easy. Yeah. Okay. I was like, the the podcast, like, it sounds cool, but, like, the post-production, like, I don't, girl, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. A show would be, like, ideal, but, like, a podcast, I'm a visual person. Business. Well, like, we gonna get into like, that though. Yeah. Keeping your, we go. I, I, we, you know, we, we I want to try that we, exactly. So we gonna keep that in the future. Yeah. But yes. you know, but the like, yeah, a show will probably be ideal. But audio, I mean, again, I'm a visual based business. 
I'm booming on freaking Pinterest, which is a visual search engine, and I just know how to maneuver that. What do you like, post on there? Huh? What do you post on Pinterest? So, so Pinterest, I for my styling business, I provide like color uh, color blocking ideas. So oh. say you you want to wear a shade of green, what do you want to wear with green? So I give you ideas with that. I provide um lookbook ideas because i need to know you know what is too boring for you what is too whatever we can talk about that later because if you want to do you want to do a lookbook feature on there and get some views to get some traffic i'm gonna be releasing that feature in august for independent designers and i can show you the snapshot i love that but um i also okay. show like i just show like a lot of visual like aids for them to kind of get you know ideas for outfits because how i do styling is like a little bit more in depth Cause I help them like align their calendar activities with like what they're wearing and closet organization. Oh. So my content is more on like giving you ideas and inspiration on what to wear, how to wear it and stuff like that. So that's what I post on Pinterest and my Pinterest is like almost three, 300,000 views a month. Send me the link. I want to check it out. Okay. 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 Oh, I'm going to see that. Okay. I need to post more on Pinterest too. I it's don't know why I don't. Girl. I'm seeing, but I don't know how to work that. I don't know for some reason. I'll show like you. You just, it's, you just it's, post. You just post pictures and it's going to be no. like. No. Okay. So, see. So you, when you create a board, it's like say you have a store and your rack, your clothing rack is all shirts. When you create a board, it needs to be that same category. So when you start posting pictures you got to give it some time because it needs to register what other shirt looks like that. Oh, so the simpler your yeah. outfit is, it's going to attach it to something else. So say your shirt looks like a St. Laurent, it's going to attach it to that and all the other pictures, all the other people who post that same picture. So it'll keep searching like that. So the longer your pin stays up, the more hits you get. So that's how it works. So it's like a visual. That's why I said I'm a visual. Like I can get with the visual game, but the whole copy and audio, no, no girl, that ain't my game. Okay. So yeah, that is how my Pinterest is. Okay. Okay. Well, then you can teach me that. Okay, because I feel like I should. I could be over there. You like TikTok? It, it's like a hit or miss for me. I like I'm not TikTok with the now. shits. You like it? It's better than Instagram right now. Sorry, yeah. I, I just, you meet new people daily. Yeah. Like, but they slow, like, my views down, but I need a thousand to do, um... Videos, lives, yeah. yes. So, I mean, I'll get there, but, I mean, it's a hit or miss for me with the with the color, like, the color ideas. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Instagram, girl, bye. They, they don't flag my account so many times. And I'm like, I'm not even a sex worker. Like, what is going on? What is going on? <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh my god, I can't. Oh my god. Okay. Cha. So anyway. Yeah. Yo, that is the end of the show. I hope y'all enjoyed. Um, clients who be coming over my personal brand page. I hope you guys go check her out and maybe she'll be a, a featured lookbook. Um, and yeah, we'll talk later. Bye y'all. Bye. <laughs>